brother Pauly. How are you, man? Good, man. How are you tonight? Doing real good. We've been talking backstage, so it's a bit weird. Um, for the fans of the Thy and Smy channel, because I know that we're live on Bearski Film as well, um, it's been a long time. Nick, unfortunately, could not join us. I did ask. Nick's busy. He's hustling. He's trying to get some bread for his child. Understandable. Um, and I'm sure whoever's watching this is very familiar with me on the Bears Country podcast because I'm there every Thursday. So you may have already heard what we're going to say, but I, I thought that this would be an interesting conversation with Paulie because he just did a good show with a man, I believe, named Michael. I we were, again, just talking about him, forgot his name. And Pauly seems to have these really strong expectations for the Bears. And I, I really want to divulge into this. Before we continue at all, though, Pauly, how you doing? Anything you want to say to kick this off? Yeah, man, I'm good. And this was uh, definitely the spur of the moment thing. We we're just like, hey, you got time? I got time. Let's get together. Let's fucking do it. And uh, and yeah, I enjoy these conversations the most. And I love diving into my philosophy of football and my expectations as a fan because me and my co-host David have talked about this at nauseum. And so I even recently I was on a channel. It's a smaller channel, only has like 40 subscribers, outspoken uh sports network. Check them out. And this is a Packers fan that runs it, but they talk general NFL and, and he's a cool dude and it's a good conversation. So I like to hop on there and even talk uh just general NFL with them. And his co-host is a, a Dallas fan. He's like, well, we got three 12 win seasons in a row, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you're in the same spot. We are. You don't understand. It's everybody against Patrick Mahomes right now. Like, and, and so for me, like I do have high expectations. I have very high expectations to be satisfied for my team. And it is Super Bowl or bust. However, I will appreciate the steps along the way, but yeah, man, I, I want to be on top in this league, and and that's you know my second te uh, favorite team has uh, has been the Patriots, just because they over the last two decades they've been able to set the example for what you can do in this league and how you can do it, and yeah, I I want a piece of that. When you're uh... Hall of Fame quarterback played his college ball at Michigan. It's hard to go wrong, like in the Patriots band. So I, I totally get you there. Um, but I, I guess I want to I want to hear it from your mouth, man. You have high expectations. You said the, the term Super Bowl or bust, and I don't know if you truly believe that, like a Dan Shorty does. But you also have on your show recently said that you feel like the Bears are about a, a nine or ten win team. So can you kind of explain exactly what you mean and then cap that all off with the division? Because that's going to be something I want to talk about, but I want to, again, hear it from you first. Well, so isn't it crazy, Carl? Like I was at, uh, I was at my good friend's house and he's had season tickets his whole life. His father has had them since the sixties and his older brother, who's, I don't know, got a good eight years on me. I asked him for a season prediction. He goes 11 wins but we miss the playoffs and he starts laughing and I'm just like, wouldn't be the, wouldn't that be the damnest thing? And then yet here we are taking steps forward, having success. We're four and two, but we're fourth in the division. Like I kind of said this during the off season when I was making my predictions for what I want to happen. Some of these teams have to suck. And, and it was supposed to be the Vikings. And here they are, five and zero. Oh. So, yeah, I, I do have this as a nine, ten win team, and I think there is different scenarios and different paths you can take to get to nine or ten wins. And with some, I'd be satisfied; with others, I wouldn't. That's why this whole year has kind of fallen on a, a big eye test for me. Because, like I said, I'll appreciate the steps along the way, and I'm not just a meathead. It's not Super Bowl or bust every year. However, there's always a chance. There is. Teams have gotten lucky. And I've talked about um, a lot how uh, Waddle on ESPN 1000 said something that stuck with me for a long time. Because you need three things for any team to win a Super Bowl. You need to be healthy. You need to be talented. And you need to be lucky. It's like whether you want to admit it or not, every team that wins a Super Bowl has had luck in their favor, right? I would and say so, the luck is the most important thing. 
No, like how lucky do the Chiefs get? Like so, so it, it's a ask the refs. Okay, but it's a balance there, Carl. There is a balance, and so I understand we could get very lucky, especially as a defensive led team, because those are the ones that spike the most and show up for one year and then don't show up consistently. Offensive led teams tend to make the playoffs year after year after year after year. Um, yeah, I, I want, I want that talent part of it to be the reason why we're competitive and why we're a good team. And, and I don't want to rely so much on luck like we have in the past, whenever we've seen any kind of success from this team. So for me, talent and health are number one and number two. And then I want, yeah, the refs to call some things our way a little bit. There's so much that needs to be unpacked there. So my comment regarding luck about being the most important thing, I think it is the most important thing, but that's out of sight of your control. You cannot control that. So you have to control the talent. And again, injuries could also be considered luck at the same time. Um, God, there's so much you said I wanted to divulge into. Um, yeah, it's a good you topic. I told the, you we could the, we could talk offensive... about the title of the show all night. We really could. Yeah, we're, we're, I, I want to hammer this out. We're gonna get something definitive out of you, whether you like it or not, before this is over, as far as expectations. Um, but there was this amazing graph, and I'm not gonna try and dig it and dig to find it because it's gonna be too hard. Someone put this amazing piece of um, data out on Twitter. It was essentially Super Bowl winning quarterbacks, and the there was a specific metric on defense that um, they ranked with it. And the Tom Brady teams that had won Super Bowls, no surprise, they had top 10 defenses at the at the end. And a lot of quarterbacks who have won Super Bowls have also had top five or quite simply the best defense paired with them. So you're right. You need talent to win a Super Bowl. The offensive teams get you there. I still think that the old term defense wins championships even to, in today's offensive centric NFL, that you you need defense. Um, but Patrick Mahomes, he if you want to talk about talent, he's obviously the most talented quarterback in the NFL right now. So, and he's he's been the most talented quarterback in the NFL. But so but, when but he's he's on, on another level. Okay, he is on another level. Um, I just wanted to say that he has gone to Super Bowls with th- not the worst offensive line in the NFL. But the offensive line that he played behind that lost to the Buccaneers, that was a bad offensive line. And they told you it was a bad offensive line because the next year, it was essentially brand new. And the Super Bowl he just won against the Kansas City Chiefs, if Justin Fields would have had that receiving core, Justin Fields would have gotten kicked out of the NFL. That is a terrible group of wide receivers, in my opinion, and Mahomes won a Super Bowl with them. You know what's crazy, Carl? Um the only team to move on from their starting quarterback after winning a Super Bowl. Do you know who it is? Say it again, please, Polly. The only team to win a Super Bowl and then in the next offseason move on from their starting quarterback. That feels like a Trent Dilfer Baltimore Ravens situation. That is Trent Dilfer Baltimore Ravens. You know what you know what it takes to make that move? A real I mean, good coach. A real good talent of, a real good talent evaluator and somebody who knows what they're seeing and believes in it. You look at the 49ers, Trey Lance, you moved up to get this kid. Yeah, and, and, and the like, Bears, and like so, the Bears would have stuck with Trey Lance until the bitter end. They correct, were able just, to identify Purdy and they said, Fuck it, cut our ties. We're in the Super Bowl window, and they did the best for them now. And they've made the correct move. So, like, I brought this question up. Like, what kind of success would Justin Fields have had to had have for you to not take Caleb Williams? And I got oh to the God. result where, like, I don't know, man. Even if he got to the Super Bowl, I know what I'm seeing. You know what I mean? And, and so... Like a lot of people are critiquing Mike Tomlin now for making the move. And I'm kind of like, well, you know what? I, I kind of get it because there's a lot of room for improvement there. Fields is miles away from doing the things that Caleb is doing right now. 
Are you kidding me? Reading blitzes, walking up to the line, letting guys know who's coming, and oh it being God. correct. We haven't seen that from Fields or from Trubisky. I don't know if there was any sort of so, that beforehand too. Like, oh my God, it's night. So we're gonna rely on nothing but the guy's athleticism to get us there, and, and, and like it's possible you can do it, dude. I'll bring up so many different situations. I'll tell you right now, um, Doug Peterson with Nick Foles. Nick Foles was a. You talked about injuries, like yeah, they got injured and still at the quarterback position and still won one. And their backup quarterback wound up being Super Bowl MVP. And three years later, he was third string on the Bears. And three years later, Doug Peterson was fired from the Eagles. You won a Super Bowl three years ago. It's on your resume. That's great. It took Andy Reid 20 years to win a Super Bowl. And it wasn't until he got Patrick Mahomes that he won one. He's been a damn better coach than Doug Peterson's ever been his whole career. So that resume is nice. They got more lucky than Andy Reid had gotten in the past. That's why I said it's it's possible, and we could sit there and do that. But when it comes to my expectations for my football team, I want dominance, and I want dominance by talent, like by by purpose, by plan. I don't want to sit here and and win games. Luckily, I want to sit here and have other teams be afraid of us. We talked, you talked about Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. Dude, can you name me the quarterbacks in this league right now that have a ring? Uh, I could try. I, cause, Let's do it. Um, Mr. Mr. PJ has gotten aggressive about this too. He didn't like the number one overall selection. He, of course, wanted the Hall, which, by the way, which would have been Williams the wrong the move this time. The Hall was last year when we got DJ Moore and another number one pick. We, that we, we already acquired the, the Hall. Yeah, we, we already acquired the Hall. Correct. Um, Super Bowl winning quarterbacks in this NFL include Mahomes. And Mahomes has three. Stafford has won a Super Bowl. At the end Joe of his Burrow career, has now, not. Right? I I can't believe that Joe Burrow has not. Josh really? Young, same well, hold thing. on. This is Lamar, important. Though. Same thing. This is important. Stafford is towards the end of his career, right? Okay, so who else has a ring in this league? Not Lamar. Currently, not Burrow. Ro- Rogers has one ring. At the end of his career. Now, right? So. You did a good job of pointing out Mr. Uh, Nick Foles, who's no longer in the NFL, so he's not an option anymore. Last year he Falcons, was. Falcons have not won the Super Bowl. We're going back. Obviously, Tom Brady is gone, so you lose a bunch there between the Patriots and the Bucks. Yeah, it's it's Slim Joe Pickens, Flacco. Right? Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco has won one. There you go. Russell Wilson. He was Wilson. instrumental in that run as well. Russell there you Wilson. go. There's two, right? And who I else? Think? We're already getting thin, man. Dude, it's the entire league against Patrick Mahomes right now. These dinosaurs have a ring from back in the day. Nobody's been able to beat this damn kid. Like, And if if they did, it was Cincinnati and Joe Burrow, and Matt Stafford capitalized on that, not the Bengals. They won their Super Bowl in the AFC Championship, and it's funny because somebody finally knocked the Kansas City Chiefs out, and then NFC team wins it. But, man, it's – tough it's the reason why the rams gambled so much and went all in to sit there and and put one shot at it to go out and get a ring it's the same reason why the 49ers did the same thing they tried to do it with a quarterback with trey lance they did it with christian mccaffrey too they traded so much draft capital put so many of the chips into the middle to go out and beat patrick mahomes the bears we're not doing that. We're not doing that this year. So, like, I, I listen, my expectations and satisfaction do come from Super Bowl or bust, but I'm realistic here. I know where we stand. What we got to do is beat the Packers twice. Like, if we want to add a defensive end right now at the trade deadline, it's not going to be Micah Parsons. It's not going to be Miles Garrett. That's for the Lions to go after because they've shown they're an inch away from potentially making it. It's step by step. It's progression. It does take a little bit of time. God damn, are we on the right path, though, which is what makes me excited. And so, like you said, I predicted this team nine and eight. I predicted them three and three going into the bye week, and they've stolen a win already. So they're already four and two. So if I had to adjust my prediction, I'd have to say I now have this team at 10 and seven. But to me, um, you know, for continued success, 
you're going to need talent. You're going to need a damn good quarterback and you're going to need a damn good coaching staff too. And, and so, you know, I'm still kind of iffy about the coaching staff, which is why I temper my expectations. I think that that's going to be the wall you hit. Yeah, man, I, I tried to dig through your Super Bowl winning quarterback comments outside of um, the opponents to Tom Brady and Peyton. Sorry, I, I just gave the answer away. The opponents to Tom, Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes in the last 10 years, the only other quarterback who has made it and not included those two players was Peyton Manning when the Denver Broncos beat the uh, Carolina Panthers. And that was 10 years ago, nine years ago. Yeah, dude, it's so, rough. That's why people don't understand. We're all in the same boat. Yeah, like, as far as far as your team building comment, what I wanted to say on that, and with the way the Bears doing it correctly this time, you you, you could have taken the haul again, right? You could have built this 49ers esque roster that has, I don't know, five caliber starting defensive tackles and four caliber defensive ends, and have this insane wave of defensive linemen. Oh, and you also have the entire all-pro offensive line. That's fine and dandy. But if you don't have the quarterback to take advantage of the talent that's already on the roster, you're not going to inject shit. So for the Bears to get Caleb Williams, it, regardless of Caleb Williams or not, I think that the Bears are smart to let go of fields and acquire a talented rookie on a four-year deal because that's the window at, in the, at the very least, right? But now, Caleb Williams, you're seeing, I'll, I'll make the comment now, I think that through six games in the NFL, Caleb Williams has already cemented himself as a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. And as far as a traje trajectory, the arrow is literally pointing directly upwards. He's only ascending each and every single week from any metric that you look. And the idea of how good he'll be in week six of his sixth year in the NFL is, is truly terrifying. He's going to be so much better in such a short period amount of time and only continue to get better. Um, let's address the off-season criticism of him. He does still paint his nails, right? I guess that sucks. That's the criticism. I, I that we guess have to go if to he loses right? a Super Bowl or an NFC Championship, he might cry or some shit. Come on, guys! Like that—that that was the problem with this kid because you couldn't find any other. That's damn problems. that's how I knew that he was good, right? Because I almost watched the entire Notre game, USC game, where he threw three interceptions. And I was still kind of attached to Fields at that point. I was like, oh, my God, Fields has the legs. We just need to see a little bit of the arm. L let's just stick with him and get the haul again or whatever it was. At that point, I did not expect the Panthers to give us the first overall pick either. But in watching that, he you can still tell how good he was. And, my God, there's not a flaw in his game football-wise, in my opinion, right now. Obviously, as a rookie, he's making some bad decisions. He he threw that bad interception to start the game off against the Jaguars. Boo hoo! But otherwise, like he can make every single throw. He's accurate on top of being able to physically like have the arm talent. And from the the brain, the brain is what's impressive to me. And it's cool for him because this is something that I think he has a tiny bit of familiar, familiarity with before the Panthers even secured the first overall pick for the Bears. Because Waldron and him go back to some sort of camp that they had, I believe. So he he had a little bit, and he came in with that running head start, in my opinion. But you're seeing it. He He's getting better a better grasp of the offense each and every week. You're seeing the rapport with his center, who, by the way, now once Caleb gets the better grasp on the offense, oh my god, the offensive line is magically playing better. I don't think that's a coincidence. Um, I don't know, man. It, it's It's so damn exciting. Um, and I'll, I'll let you rebuttal to this, but again, we need to talk about your expectations. That's what I want to pull out of you before we're done here. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I thought I tried to get that out there. Like my expectations are super bowl or bust and there's ways you can get to a super bowl and, and win one, like, like I said, you could have a really good defense. We saw it in 06. We saw two out of the three phases of football winning winning really, really well in their areas, right? Special teams and defense. And the offense was able to at least put out a running game. But I'll tell you right now, I believe what, it was What the, are you talking about right now? What what time frame? Are you talking about a six? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. So, 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 like, so, like, you could still, you know, get to one, potentially win one, just winning two out of the three phases. Um, Thigh, 
2010 Chargers, they had the number one offense and the number one defense. They missed the playoffs. They went nine and seven because they had the 32nd special teams in the league. Okay, so the number one offense and the number one defense wasn't enough to sit there and make up for the lack of the third phase of the football team when you're giving up punt returns or kick returns for touchdowns, when you're missing field goals left and right, when, you know what I mean? It's just, it is a team game. So there is a balance to it. Um, Right now we are very defensive heavy. And I expected to lean on the defense early on in the season. And the schedule is so beneficial for us, for us to be able to gel as an offense to get ready for these right uh, divisional games at the end of the season. And I just Imagine felt that that has happened faster than I expected it to. Imagine that the bears had to play the Packers in green Bay on Sunday night football in week two, instead of the Texans. Imagine that loss and how it would affect Caleb Williams. I think Caleb Williams, the way that they lost that game, right? It sucked because they could have won. And I think Caleb Williams would have told you that he could have played much, much, much better. The offensive line was trash as well, right? But then he got little broed by CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud essentially acted like Tom Brady to him and said, keep your head up. You're going to be all this and that, which in, in its core, that's a really nice thing, right? But he's acting yeah. like he has the five rings on his hand. I think that sparked right. Caleb Williams and said, what the fuck are you doing, man? You don't even have one. You're Ohio State scum. So. I, I think that the way that the NFL scheduled this, I said this as soon as the record, or sorry, the schedule was released, right? For the Bears to have their NFL, uh, their divisional games backloaded, I think the NFL wants Caleb Williams to be successful because if the Bears are successful, the NFL is making a lot more money and it's just better for the NFL product as a whole. So absolutely the way that the schedule is set up is awesome. Um, so your expectation, again, is Super Bowl or bust every year? Um, if you don't win a Super Bowl, like I had this conversation about Lamar Jackson, where my buddy David was like, Do you think he's a good quarterback? Would you trade him? Like, would you trade Fields? And this was at the beginning of Fields' last year here, so the beginning of 2023. He's like, Would you trade Fields and a first for Lamar? And I was like, No, I don't think so. Like, I, I still see potential in fields we still have to figure out who he is he's like but dude he's like lamar's an mvp okay he does also have the coaching staff there that's bent over backwards to make everything as easy for him as possible but um but at the end of the day i was like okay he's an mvp so what how many rings does he have like you could be an mvp all you want when you take a look through history and you take a look at quarterbacks, <laughs> we could say that Aaron Rodgers underperformed based off how talented he was. He Absolutely. should have won more than Without that. a shadow of a doubt, I will say that th- I don't know what the period was. Not these last two MVPs that he won because that was just a product of LaFleur, in my opinion. That offense was so good that he was able to have those numbers inflate and look good. But kind of... After after he won the Super Bowl, there was this period where he was, without a shadow of the doubt, the most talented quarterback in the NFL. And you could have said ever. He was the original until, get out of the pocket to throw. Mahomes. Until Patrick Mahomes. Absolutely, yes. And yes. so that's why this is scary because, like I said, but he's only Mahomes, got he's got he's got the same amount of NFC championship wins as Grossman. Patrick Rogers, Mahomes so. is the next level because he's as talented as Rodgers was and as smart as Brady was. And and that's why he's kind of like the Michael Jordan of the NFL right now, because even the contract he took, man, I, you, you showed me some graphics before we started. I have some graphics. I went back the last 10 years, took the top 10 quarterback contracts and what their salary cap hit was. And then did the math to where I came up with a percentage of how much percentage of the team's cap are they taking up? And did it top 10 quarterbacks 10 years in a row, right? And 10 years ago, eight out of the, the top eight guys had either been in a Super Bowl or won a Super Bowl or are competing for a Super Bowl. And then this last year was just wild. Deshaun, like 
10 years ago, the average was about 14% of the cap for a quarterback. And it kind of hovered between 14 and 16%. It dipped down like 12% one year. And then last year, it shot up. Deshaun Watson was 25% of the Browns cap. Uh, Dak Prescott was 21%. Matt Stafford was up there, but he had won one. So, okay, pay him. And then it was like uh, Daniel Jones was up there. What? And then uh, um, why am I blanking on the, the name? Arizona Cardinals quarterback. Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray was like number five. And Patrick Mahomes was number six. So while you're doing this run, you're still out of the top five paid quarterbacks. In the last 10 years that I put together, Brady appeared on the list once at number six. And it was his first year in Tampa when it was his go get paid year. Because we're not going to pay you here in New England. Just go somewhere and get your $30 million or whatever. And that's when he finally popped up on the list. But he showed that taking less money is such a, a brilliant strategy for allowing you to be able to pay a defense, to pay the a thing, special team. You win the Super Bowl this- by three points, but you're allowed to pay a kicker top money. And so Patrick Mahomes has that little bit to him where he's not so greedy that he has to be the top paid guy and this and that. Like you said, he just did it with one of the shittiest wide receiver cores. You traded away Tyreek Hill. Why? Because your quarterback's going to make the wide receivers better. Just like Brady did it with Julian Edelman, who was a seventh round pick. Like it's your quarterback that makes the, makes the wide receivers better. There's so many things to unpack here. So Always, man. I told you I could talk. Mr. 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 Tom Brady was the master of this, right? He did Correct. not take the most money because a, he had won his Super Bowls on his rookie contract, aka just like Mahomes. So Tom just like Brady Russell Wilson knew. did, but Russell Tom Wilson Brady, then took more money. Tom Brady had that famous story, right? He walked into um, the owner's um, uh, office. Wow, that was hard to grab. So he walked into the owner's office. And he said, "Hello, owner. I'm Mr. Tom Brady. I'm going to make you have this be the best draft pick you ever had." So he came in with a chip on his shoulder, and when he won the Super Bowl. They just fucking poured into him. They're like, hey, man, we're going to get you this contract because you're going to be on this team for 15 years and we're going to win so many fucking rings that your hand is going to get arthritis. And that's exactly what happened with Mahomes. He won his Super Bowls on his rookie deal. They knew that he was going to be the face of the NFL. And they said, hey, man, look at Tom Brady, what he did. What we're going to do is is we're going to give you this 10-year contract. And he this is after his rookie year, right? The first extension that he ever signed was like a 10-year deal so these guys were getting top dollar they're not getting it over 10 years so they told him they believed in him for the long haul and on top of that because he won those super bowls and because he has a good head of hair he's got three different endorsements those endorsements <laughs> he could have been bald he could have been bald, bald. i don't know about that we'll get into a different conversation on that but patrick mahomes three endorsement deals i'll do some legwork for this thursday show on bcp i promise you that those three endorsement deals combined annually would put him top 10 quarterback oh, salary in the NFL, dude, no dude. doubt. He's he at married least doubling a woman his NFL that made salary. more than him. You're talking about his Tom Brady. Wife, his, Tom Brady. I, I was talking about Mahomes at the end there, but oh. yes. Tom, okay, Tom yeah, Brady Mahomes. also absolutely, his wife, Giselle, more money yeah, than dude, him. Dude. And guess what he just did? He signed a contract dude. with NFL, uh, sorry, with Fox yes. to narrate games that he now is not legally allowed to do. You understand yeah. he's made $300 million from getting – like and he's pouring that into the Vegas Raiders. Years in the NFL. He's pouring he made like that. $250 million. Right, but he's pouring all this money now, in, and his wife as well, are pouring this money into owning a portion of the Raiders, who are, by the way, located in the sports betting capital of the world. That investment's going to skyrocket. I don't know what comes after Billion, but Brady might be able to get to there with his wife. I've talked about this at nauseum, like on our show. The financial side of the football game is dictates so much and yet it's so like not talked about and looked at and one of the problems we have right now in the landscape of the nfl is we're trying to pay everybody like they're peyton manning and they're not peyton manning there's very few quarterbacks that truly deserve top money yet due to situation we overpay quarterbacks left and right. That's why you have Daniel Jones being a top five quarterback. That's why you had Ryan Tannehill being a top paid quarterback one year. Ryan Tannehill. The fuck? Like why? Listen. So that that, that, that I need I need to say this before I forget, slash it gets lost in the wayside. 
Mahomes signed this 10-year, $450 million contract in 2020. We're now in 2024, and these new deals that are coming out are just quite simply because the cap is going up. But why did Deshaun Watson demand a very high-paying contract, which the Bills or wow, oh. Browns were stupid enough to give because, fully guaranteed? Because, the because Browns- he knew that he would never get the off-the-field endorsements. No, 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 no. It wasn't that. It was because the Browns did him an extra favor. On top of giving him a fully guaranteed contract, his first year's salary was only one million because they knew he'd get suspended and the suspension takes he didn't want to lose the money. Correct. So you can only lose your but year's why salary. Is this money and so because fully of that guaranteed. He's playing dude, like shit. Every owner in the NFL was so pissed at the Browns. When they did, yeah. That. Now look because at the that. Ravens were up against the contract with Lamar, and Lamar's like, "Well, yeah. he can get that. Why can't I get that?" And, and yeah. it's like the Browns just went haywire, and that's why no team was really going to be willing to bail them out. Like you can, you no. can come up with potential trades. Like I heard Miles Garrett and Deshaun Watson to the Lions, but you have to take Deshaun Watson with you because you got to eat the money for the Browns because they're. They owe him like a hundred million dollars in the next two years, and he's going no, to get it one way or another. And, the, and so that's why yeah. the ownership in the league really just—I mean, they—they they were pissed that the Browns were willing and actually made that move. But when you take a look at successful franchises, right, dude, dude Russell Wilson came into a great situation. They had paid Matt Flynn some money it wasn't huge guaranteed money but he had a 40 million dollar contract they drafted russell wilson in the third round right they decided to eat the guaranteed money and start a third round draft pick based off what they saw in practice because like i said earlier if you're a real coach and you're a real talent evaluator and you really believe in what you're seeing then you know what you're doing and it's worth just cutting the money that's why i really liked when we cut pj walker and kept tyson bajan I don't care that we're paying PJ Walker $3 million, whatever, just eat it. Take the better guy. It says something. It makes a statement. And then they won with Russell Wilson on his rookie deal. Why? Because they had a really good defense and a run game. When it came time for the finances to shift and Russell Wilson got paid the big money, even he wasn't good enough to carry the entire team on his shoulders. So like I said, we're paying everybody like they're Peyton Manning yet very few of them deserve that money. So with Justin Fields here, dude, I would have kept Justin Fields if he wanted $20 million a year. But we're looking like a Daniel Jones thing where we're going to wind up paying him. And then he could take a step back or be average or this and that. I'm not trying to just pay a guy top money to be average or maybe something better. No. So like even with Caleb right now, him as a businessman, I really truly hope that in four or five years, he understands the financial game. And he talks about it being a business a lot and how his head's in that. I mean, dude, he's already done the claw. He's already got a little trademark going. Um, I really, truly hope he's a guy that's willing to take less money. Because I, I find that to be huge. When it actually happens. Scottish put a comment on here. He said, if Caleb Williams is serious about beating Brady's record, he's going to uh, take it easy with his contract. Hike. He, he has Again, to, Scottish. The, the framework is already in there. I think that the number is going to be $60 million, right? $60 million per year for Caleb Williams once it's time to pay Caleb Williams in four years. That's going to feel like a bargain because it's going to go to 70 75 damn near $80 million in five years per year for these top tier quarterbacks. But if Caleb is told, hey, we're gonna give you 60 million for 10 years while you're being paid by an insurance ad, a food ad, a cosmetic ad, he's gonna double the salary there. He will appreciate being poured into and said, we're not just gonna give you this big amount of money for a little, we're gonna give you a substantial amount of money for a long time. And that was my point was just that Watson, who was accused of getting handies from the massage parlors who's going to give him a head and shoulders ad no one so all the money in his entire generational line is going to come from that one contract so he wanted the high money then you add the stupidity of the browns 
well, fuck it. We need a quarterback. We just got rid of Baker. Let's do it fully guaranteed. That's the clusterfuck the Browns are in. But that's not dude, what we're here to talk dude, about. Dude, dude, you know what I thought about just the other day? I, I think uh, – I don't know what I was doing. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But I was like – um, Kirk Cousins, if you watch the quarterback documentary on Netflix, he talked about how when he got into the league, Santana Moss – was telling him how important it is to take care of your body if you we've want. We've talked uh, about this. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so like he's like, I started getting massages multiple times a week. And like Tevin Jenkins, that's something he messaged um, uh, said recently. Like for the first three years, I wasn't getting massages. Now I'm starting to realize how important it is to take care of your body. And, and okay, so Deshaun's still got to be getting massages, right? <laughs> yeah. so, so I just started wondering, like, from, so a, that, from a man, so from a man, from a man. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Listen, fucking hell. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not going to ruin your show here, but uh, you can't. Yeah, there's ruin a lot nothing. of ways. Monetized. You can say anything you want. There's except, a lot of uh, different ways this conversation can go, but uh, yeah, it's important, man. And like, clearly, this guy doesn't have a good track record with masseuses, right? So. uh yeah, on, a, on, a on a legitimate on a legitimate note from that quarterback documentary series, Patrick Mahomes was getting the, again in a non sexual way. Patrick Mahomes was get, literally getting bent over the table in any which way that you could possibly imagine to brace himself for a potential injury. My God, I hope that Caleb Williams is doing at least half of that because that stuff clearly is showing its dividends or paying dividends. Carl, this is what I mean though. Like, uh, okay, so we talked about Aaron Rodgers. And him, you know, having a lack of success, despite how talented he is. So let's go to that one here that he did win. Who was his head coach? McCarthy. Who was his offensive coordinator? Aaron Rodgers. No, it, McCarthy, in on all legitimacy, uh, was Mike Joe McCarthy Philbin. was the... That was the title. McCarthy was calling the plays. Dude, and then Rodgers was... The most sacked quarterback that year. So bad offensive line wasn't even an excuse. Why? Because a quarterback's greatness was enough to be able to overcome an average head coach, a terrible offensive coordinator, and a, a pretty bad pass-blocking offensive line. He was still able to get one, right? But this is why Patrick Mahomes has three, is because he has Andy Reid, because he has the talent. And he's damn good. Like he's Aaron Rodgers good. You, you see what I'm saying? So, so, so. I never got to touch on that. You, you made a really good point. You said that Mahomes is essentially the physical talent of Rodgers and the mental talent of Tom Brady. 100%. I think <laughs> it, it's ironic because um, Aaron Rodgers just completed another Hail Mary against the Bills on Monday Night Football. And the next day on Pat McAfee's show, he goes, Oh, my aim is to get the ball up high so that it gets lost in the lights oh, and not great, a low trajectory. Great, great. But even at my age, after coming off of an Achilles injury, I can casually throw a ball Except 70 pop yards. Pop pop You're fucking doctor. wrong. Mahomes can do that because Mahomes has the best arm in the NFL. Mahomes has a better physical strong arm than Rodgers, even during Rodgers' playing time. In, sorry, his prime playing time as the most talented physical player at the quarterback position, right? Ben Roethlisberger had a stronger arm. Ben Roethlisberger, he was more prone to run instead of pass it, when he was, you know, because he was getting used to getting sacked so goddamn much. And accuracy-wise, night and day, he was nowhere near as accurate as Rodgers. But Roethlisberger had a stronger arm. I think that Mahomes has a Roethlisberger. We're not going to make the, the perfect quarterback, which is Mahomes, right? But Roethlisberger had that strong arm. The accuracy, of course, Rodgers, Tom Brady, the brain. So but, Mahomes but is clearly the most talented quarterback in the NFL. And, and so so that's what it is, though. And like, like we said, the other guys that have rings in this league all got them before Mahomes. The only one to beat him was the previous Michael Jordan of football, which was Tom Brady. Listen, this kid's Ironic, got Ironic, he hold. beat him twice in the Man, AFC this Championship kid's got game. got a hold and... on this league right now. I'm telling you right now, it's going to take a lot, a lot to be able to sit there and go off and win a Super Bowl I, against Patrick Mahomes. I and feel so, so bad for the AFC, right? Because, again, I listed some of the quarterbacks who I think are the most uber-talented. 
I don't really want to touch the Lamar Jackson situation because he's clearly an MVP caliber. He's won the MVP. He's a very talented quarterback. But after Mahomes, for me, it goes in no particular order. Josh Allen, um, Joe Burrow, and unfortunately the Ohio State scum, C.J. Stroud, he only continues to ascend up there too. But I mean, Lamar. And that's Jackson all the didn't... AFC though. Lamar Jackson's making the AFC Championship, so that's four AFC quarterbacks, dude. You Regar take the, regardless if, of that because the Ravens the have a great or defense. Six best AFC quarterback, put him in the NFC, and he's probably he's going to be in the, the Super championship Bowl every, every year. year. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. So, this is the opportunity we have in front of us, being in this division, having a guy like Caleb. That's what I mean. The value of this is so high. The potential of this is so high because he is that good of a prospect. And now he's showing that he is growing at a great rate. He's showing that he can do this next level stuff even very early on. That's why it, it's that's why even me, as a guy who always looks at the glass half empty, is getting excited. Like we've had some shows on Bearski Film where we just went in on a very unpopular topic, like Justin Fields. And everybody, like even my co-host David was like, no, Luke gets you. And I was like, no, 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 fuck that. He's the guy getting the ball. Like, I don't care if you call it two screens in a row. Don't throw it then. Like, at some point, it does fall on you too as the player. And I always tend to give the players more credit. And I'll give them more blame too. And, like, what you need to beat Patrick Mahomes is insane. Dude, Josh Allen, I go back to that one playoff where – they each had seven possessions, and both teams had seven touchdown drives. And it was like the they only lost game in they, Kansas they City, right? Lost the overtime. Yeah, they game. only lost because they uh, lost the coin flip in overtime. Yeah, that was probably the best NFL game in history. So, like, okay, opinion, so Josh Allen recently. deserves the money. Then he can keep up. He deserves to get paid what he's getting paid. And now you're seeing it, even in what's a rebuild year. They're still four and two on top of the division. Yes, it's because of their quarterback. And I'll argue this day and night. Scottish Bear put a, a, um, a comment in there. Polsky's correct. Caleb Williams could save Fluce's, jobs, Fluce's job at the Bears. He has already, I think. Like, Bill Belichick didn't win another one without Tom Brady. Andy Reid, it took him 20 years to win one. He didn't win one until he got Patrick Mahomes. He was always a damn good coach. Doug Peterson won one and got fired three years later and is a crap coach. Just because you have the Super Bowl win on your resume, it doesn't dictate that you're a good coach. You could have just gotten lucky. Like I said, it's that triangle. You know what I mean? And so the way I want my team to win, my expectation is to be damn good, is, is to, to be able to stay healthy through, throughout a year, and is to have the talent be what overcomes everything else. And then when we do get a little bit lucky, we'll win one. But I don't want to depend on that luck factor, Carl. And so, you know, I know we're 45 minutes in, and like you said, we got to talk about my expectations. And like I said, it's Super Bowl or bust. So I'm willing to have the patience to wor work towards that goal of having the talent be the strong point on this team and, and having dominance by design be what, truly leads us because that's what Tom Brady did and that's what Patrick Mahomes is doing now. It's going to take a lot, but you know, it mainly takes the quarterback. And I think we might finally have a guy that's capable of doing it at that kind of level, which is why, you know, like I said, I predicted him nine and eight. I'm already kind of moving on off that and saying 10 and seven. I'll, I'll admit it. They're doing better than I thought they would be. And it's because of the so quarterback. Yeah, it, it's your point is confusing. I'll see if we can get to it in a, like a round trip circle. I'm already losing what I wanted to say. Um, as far as holy smokes, okay. So the big thing I mentioned that Patrick Mahomes has recently gotten to and legitimately won Super Bowls with pretty lackluster talent at certain skill groups, right? What did C.J. Stroud do last year? He took a, an unknown Nico Collins. Sorry, well, yes, an unknown Tank Dell. And then Nico Collins, who not a lot of people have seen. By the way, I'm a Michigan fan. I didn't know much about Nico Collins because I would consider that a bit of a dark period for Michigan. But, oh, my God, Nico Collins was making these plays in college with really poor quarterback plays. So. But you know what drives me nuts? 
For him to be a you top know, real two quick, receiver, you know what I'm drives not me nuts? What's that? A year ago, we were right where they were, weren't we? Yeah. So that, that's so what like I'm we gonna... us and Houston were in the same spot. And now a year and later, I've... they're a playoff real team, and we still need more time. What's the difference? They got the right quarterback, man. CJ Stroud yeah, went exactly. in there and, and did his job. That, that's what that's the exact point I'm trying to make, right? Is that CJ Stroud has obviously proven that he's going to elevate the entire roster around him, making the offense better around him, subsequently making the defense better. That's just what great quarterbacks do. And I've talked to some guys who are more, they do a, a Houston or a, a, a Houston sports based show, but specifically when talking about the Texans, I asked them, I'm like, man, I don't know anyone on this offensive line except your, you know, your left tackle tonsil. Um, I thought that you guys sucked when, you know, you earned the second overall pick. What happened here? They said, yeah, CJ Stroud has just made the offensive line better. So that's what I expected Caleb Williams to do. But again, th- we took, CJ Stroud took an unknown Nico Collins and has legitimately elevated him into one of the best receivers in the NFL. Statistically, he's leading the league in receiving yards after, you know, pulling a hamstring and missing a game. He's elevating these players. I have not seen that from Caleb Williams just yet. He has not taken a guy like a Tyler Scott and made him a household name or Uh, anyone else. uh, He he is taking time to gel with these receivers, right? But Keenan Allen is just Keenan Allen. DJ Moore is not anything more special than he was last year. And DJ Moore, very, very special. He has this incredible rapport with Roma Dunze, but Roma Dunze isn't even the leader in wide receiver, you know, receiving yards. Yeah, there is one guy. There is one guy. Number 11, Carter. Well, DeAndre Carter is a pro's pro. He filled in for Mr. Keenan Allen. And no, DeAndre Carter did not put himself on the Pro Bowl spectrum with his performances. He just did in his did his job and he did well. But he has not elevated anyone to a Nico Collins situation, you know? It's, it's still too early for that. Exactly. You are like, not wrong. And I think he'll get there, though. So there's a, there's a story that Julian Edelman told. He said, man, when you – and Julian Edelman was a seventh-round draft pick. Seventh round, right? Dude, we saw Tom Brady take guys like Deion Branch, win a Super Bowl with them. Deion Branch goes away. Does nothing, comes back, has a successful year with Tom Brady. Bro, and then, Deion and then Branch is talented, him. man. I, I, I'm I going to bring up something before we're done here. But and then talking. we saw him get Randy Moss statistically have the a great ever. season. But the best lose, ever. But, but Super Bowl or bust. That was uh, a Randy clip, Moss does, does not have a – Randy Moss does not have a Super That's Bowl. That's correct. Right. He does not. But he's a okay. Hall of Famer. Right, but you became – one dimensional in a way to where there was a game plan to beat you. The way you've won in the past is by being multidimensional, by being able to have a good defense, have a good running game, have, have like, dude, what the Patriots did, they'd get a no name running back, three touchdowns in a night because of his body style and the defense that they're facing. and because Well, look at the NFL currently regarding running backs. Aside from Saquon Barkley, who's making anything that would be able to set up their grand cut to never work again? They're not making money, man, and it's not fair to them, but again, totally separate from what you're saying. Yeah, but, um, but so the story Julian Edelman told as a seventh-round draft pick on the Patriots, he said, when you go and practice with a quarterback, you'll, you'll run 25 – 30 plays in practice. He's like, I went to practice with Brady. We ran 80, nearly triple of what I'm used to. He's like, and throughout this, as he's making the throws and whatever, he's coaching me up afterwards. He's like, no, I need you to do this this way. The ball is going to come here. It's going to be right in this spot. Like, and um, he's like, he coached me better than any wide receiver coach I ever had my entire career. So this is why I'm so stuck on this quarterback impact thing, because in what I've seen a quarterback be able to do, dude, the the Patriots would trade back in drafts there. I remember a year where their top pick was in the third round because they put guys in the right spot to do one thing that they need them to do, which they're good at. So you have good coaching, putting players in good spots and asking 
the expectations of what they're to do is realistic. And like with an offensive line, I remember um, Nate Solder, a soldier or soldier or whatever for a while was the only first round pick on the Patriots offensive line. And other than that, it was kind of slapped together, but guess what? If the left tackle gives up pressure, instead of trying to rush around and make a miracle play happen, what would Tom Brady do? Throw the ball at the ground. Second down lets them to play another down. You know what I mean? That helps your offensive lineman. And so like, I think we saw it when it came to like Tyson Bajan and fields, Fields was getting sacked five times a game. Tyson Bajan came in and got sacked five times over four and a half games. Why? Because he's just letting the ball out quicker, which makes it easier on the offensive lineman. And these guys get paid at the end of the day based off their statistics. So they're going to make more money with that kind of style of quarterback play because they're getting more, you know, better production. And instead of having to block for five, six, seven seconds and then run downfield to try and block some more, um, because it's hard. So the impact of a quarterback is huge. You can improve his offensive line greatly. You can make wide receivers great out of no names. You really can. And we've seen guys do it. We've seen Phillip Rivers do it. We've seen um, Aaron Rodgers do it. I saw Ben Roethlisberger do it. Dude, the Steelers, Ben Roethlisberger. Santonio Holmes wanted money. They said, no, thanks. Bye-bye. After that, it was Mike Wallace. They made the playoffs again. I, th- nope. I think you're you getting a little bit. Bye bye. You're getting a little bit outside the scope because the Steelers are the best NFL franchise ever, or football sports franchise sure. ever, to find top tier talent at a position group, and also marry that talent with a fucking head case. Because okay. whoever you just said, Santonio Holmes, Mike Wallace, Antonio Brown, Why? these guys are so talented but so crazy. Julian Edelman. Antonio Brown let, was let a six-round draft pick. Julian let me Edelman talk, was a let me why talk about my, wait, Why can't my expectation not be greatness? And no, no, no. That that's fine. And we're gonna we're gonna end it with that be, or with, with that point in a bit because I I need to hammer it out with you and I'll I'll do my best to explain what I'm trying to say. Um, Julian Edelman, talent wise, he was a quarterback. He was not a wide receiver. He transitioned, but what? What I get from anything that I've ever heard from Julian Edelman, outside from him being a pro's pro, pro, right? He understood the pressure of playing with Tom Brady. And it wasn't because of Tom Brady's Tom Brady. It was because Tom Brady had that status. He's got the wife. He's got the Super Bowl rings. When you get these guys in, and this was later in in his career, not when he was a rookie, right? These guys say, oh my fucking God, this guy is the literal definition of greatness. I need to work my absolute goddamn tail off to not disappoint him. They're not worried about anything else except trying to please him. So now, when you have the same situation with Mahomes, these guys that are coming in, uh, unfortunately, in the case of uh, Rashid Rice, right? He wins a Super Bowl for Mahomes, and then he's trash off the field. He's doing stupid shit off the field. You cannot have that. They don't have the Bill Belichick to enforce that. Again, Andy Reid's a great coach. But my point there is is that once the quarterback's going to get established... Yeah, exactly, because you understood that you are going to invest in Mahomes, and Mahomes can elevate those wide receivers. Obviously, they made the right choice trading away Tyreek Hill. But once a Caleb Williams hopefully achieves this level of greatness, whether that's via Super Bowl rings or not, I hope it is, you're not going to have this incredible cast of wide receivers like the Bears do now. But these guys hope they're going to come in, and regardless of where they're drafted, how much money they're making, they're going to say, oh my fucking God, that's Caleb Williams. We have to try our ass off for him. So at, at surface level, like what we're seeing with um, C.J. Stroud, they're elevating the play, but these guys are quite simply playing harder for their quarterback, and the Bears haven't had that ever. So, yeah, as I far mean, as wide receivers go, I mean, we were talking. While about you're talking scenario, about that, I want to we throw up about something. A scenario where we have to have everything perfect for Justin Fields, and I was like, no, that's an issue because you're going to have to pay Justin Fields. And then you're going to have to do it with less. So, like, it, like this thing has exactly, to balance exactly. out somehow, right? So, um, yeah, whether it's less defense or less offensive help, like, if you're going to get those wide receivers, sure, you might be able to afford them, but then you're not going to have a defense, you know? So, yeah, it's a balance. That, that, that's what it took. It, it took a rookie quarterback, hopefully, and a very good surrounding cast, which is only going to get better. We can touch on that in a little bit, too. 
Um, but hopefully what happens is the Tom Brady, Caleb, or sorry, um, Patrick Mahomes route where you have the quarterback being the best player and everyone else is elevating up to that standard. Um, this is a very rig- like silly point that I'm trying to show on the screen here, right? And this has nothing to do with anything other than the fact that you mentioned the name Dion Branch. I couldn't. Yeah, sleep. I saw one tweet of yours was like, "If I'm an arrogant prick or something, if you go down, what is it? I'll, I'll show it. I'll show. I'll show the clip. I'm not going. <laughs> yeah, there you go. If I if like I come that. across, I'll show that. Comment. Yeah, man, I'll show that in a second. It puts a smile on my face. But my God, this is a fucking incredible list of names, right? Dion Branch, Nate Burleson, Bobby Ingram, who is a former Bear, DJ Hackett, Daryl Jackson. This is a fantastic core. If you trade Willie Ponder, who I have no idea who that is, if you take Willie Ponder and put a true NFL number one receiver on that roster for that position, this is the greatest wide receiver core of all time. I will not let you tell me otherwise. Um, If you want to pump in here, obviously, but I'll, I'll show you that tweet that you're a big fan of. There you go. Look at that. God, it gives me goosebumps. I don't know if you can see it. Sorry. No, oh, that's man. great. That's great. It. No, and, and so, dude, that's that's the thing. Is like I do have very high expectations for my football team. I want. You should. Yes, you should. As you should. Like, and to me – it's not about instant success. Like I know there's been a lot of conversation about Jaden Daniels versus Caleb Williams. I don't care, man. Let them have it. Like I'm seeing what I want out of our guy. I'm seeing the growth, yeah. the success, the success uh, right now, after the picks have been made, the success of Jaden Daniels has nothing to do with Caleb Williams. Just like Justin Fields, that ship has sailed. The only sane thing to do regarding Justin Fields is root for him to play so that the Bears get the fourth round pick instead of the sixth. Pretty if you much. want to root, if you want to root for Jaden Daniels, go ahead. Do I like him? No. I thought that he was made by his incredible LSU wide receivers. Totally, completely different argument. But if you want to root for him, who cares? Him doing good or bad, aside from the game that we're going to see here in a couple weeks, has nothing to do with Caleb Williams at all. Correct. But so that's why I focus just on what we have. And yeah, man, I don't know. Caleb Williams is super impressive to me. He really is. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of next level stuff. Like, like I said, this year was going to be all about the eye test for me. Not so much about the record. It, it's all about the eye test and the statements you make. So one of the things I think we need to do is beat the Packers twice. Because we're sitting here preaching let's change. Rope, let's let's rope this Packers comment into your expectations. Because I believe you said that your expectation is to beat the Packers twice. It is. That was my prediction. I predicted them to go nine and eight, but four and two in the division. Uh, split the Vikings, split the Lions, and sweep the Packers. Split the Vikings. Yes. Okay. Because I didn't think they were going to go five and one. Like I, now, I I would be able to understand your expectation of four and two in the division a lot more if before any football was played this season, you said the Bears would sweep the Vikings and split the Lions and Packers. As far as an expectation, I don't think that's the right term, and that's what I, I wanted to talk to you about. Is your expectation is not the Super Bowl, but you expect good product from the bears and especially in the division four and two but you're predicting nine and eight eight nine wins i don't see where that's lining up so like i said we did a whole show where we went through the whole schedule and everything like that so i have it on there and like right now i expected them to be three and three i told you they snuck out a game so if i was to adjust my prediction right now i'd have to adjust it to ten and eight but um yeah, I just I just think that if we're going to sit here and preach change, I need to actually see it. Like, why don't you actually go out there and do it? Historically, we've matched up well about, with the Vikings. We've matched up well with the Lions. It's the Packers that are our problem. And so that, for me, that says a lot. Even if I feel that this team overall is still not where it needs to be, I, I felt it was set up in a way for Caleb to be able to progress. Um, but I feel, I, I told you th- there's a nine and eight prediction. And there's multiple ways to get to it. 
some ways that I'm upset with and some ways that I'm happy with. So when I gave my prediction, I gave the best possible road to that nine and eight record that I could. And that was still with sweeping the Packers twice. Is it fair, Paulski, to say that you're ever so slightly not confusing, but interchanging the word expectation with preference and desire? Because if you told me your desire was to sweep the Packers and still go nine and eight, fuck yeah, give that to me. I want that. But as far as an expectation and overarching expectations for the Bears, I don't think that there should have been any expectations for the Bears. If the Bears drafted ninth again because the division was strong and they had a rookie quarterback trying to hammer some stuff out, that's fine. It sucks, right? Because I know a certain co-host of a certain Bears Country podcast that predicted the Bears to win the Super Bowl. We did a prediction. I can throw it up on the screen. I think I had the Bears getting at least 10 wins and going to the playoffs. But as far as an expectation this year, there should be no expectations for what I think. So most of what I value in my expectations is not statistical. It is more eye test. That's why I'm really happy with seeing Caleb command the offense. And, and, and it, to me, it's not about the overall record this year um, because I do think this is a stepping stone year, right? So for you to say there's no expectations, well, that's not right. If they get three wins, you're not going to be happy. But you can't say my expectations are to secure a top five draft pick. That's asinine. What I'm saying is... Oh, dude, I don't want it, the top five draft let, pick. I want the 32nd No, absolutely. Pick. No, I know. That's, that's the one that's I want. You're, like you're if I, if I expected, the here. If, if I expected a three-win season, again, I said that'd be asinine. But I don't think that it would is, it, it, it's fair it's a different story because we know what Caleb is, but it, it's not fair to have the expectation before the Titans game and say the Bears need to win the division. I expect the Bears to win the division. That is not fair in my opinion. Next year, I... once we have seen what we have as far as a quarterback, because I already told you what I feel about it because we know, we know in my opinion that Caleb Williams has secured himself through six games as a top ten quarterback in the NFL, he's that goddamn good. Well, and well, what I, I expect. What do you not? You don't want to hurt his feelings. Like, listen, we just talked about C.J. Stroud. They were in the same spot as we were. It does not take that long to flip things around, especially if you're at least an average roster which we've now gotten to a point where we were like Ryan Poles preached this whole patience thing. So he could really truly overturn this thing from the core. And we've done that. We've let it happen. And dude, if you have a quarterback that makes a difference, like that's why, that's why even this year could be a, a year, man, because it, it's yeah. And once the window's wrong. open, it's open. Once it's no, open, it's open. I just didn't you, think it'd you be cannot, open yet. You cannot but I to take see anything the signs. as far as... Mm -hmm. I wanted to see the signs that are going to make me feel good about it being open for the next three years. However, we're a little bit ahead of schedule. So I'm actually impressed going, hey, uh, this team could put itself in a position to, to actually make a little run here. Yeah, like we're we're not we're not messing around, right? Like in my prediction here, I said um, that they would lose to the Rams, but they would beat the Colts. Well, it just flip flopped. So as far as let's talk expectations, honestly, this wasn't an expectation. This was a prediction. No, you had them at three and three as well, just like I. I, had I have the exact. I yeah, three. It was three and three, which is no three so and they're, two. They're over. They're over. To my prediction, I, I don't know if too. I had expectations for them. I, Honestly, that I is predicted, your expectation. Your I prediction is it? No, prediction and expectation. I don't want to call that the same thing. Why not? So, what's the difference? Because I, I think with the, I, I value the word expectation more in the sense that if I expected the Bears to win the division, if I expected the Bears to go four and two in the division, and they didn't, that would not only mean I'm disappointed, but it would be like a cause for concern. Again, if the Bears found a way to end up with the ninth overall pick again this year for, because of circumstance, because the division was strong, because McCaffrey didn't get hurt and they won more, you know, they beat the Bears instead of me saying that the Bears would beat the 49ers. 
there's a lot of different things that could line up to that. But my I didn't have expectations for the Bears this year. Um, but next year, after Caleb Williams has already shown me that he's a top ten quarterback in the NFL, but there's your expectation. after the Bears but have there's your expectation going into next my expectation year. is that Caleb needs to show me he's a top ten quarterback in the NFL so that next year I can expect this. You just said it. Thank you, Cliff. I appreciate that. So, I don't know. I I think it we're kind of trying to to slice a piece of hair in half. We're we're, we're grasping at straws. We are. Um, we are, and it's because it's because we're talking about the difference between statistics and the eye test. So what I'm telling you is like the win loss total doesn't really matter for me so much. It's more of the statement and the eye test, and like the only two like. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying I would be satisfied if we went two and fifteen here, but like those two Packer games to me matter a lot, just due to the statement and and the dude. I need to see this thing turning a page. You see what I'm saying? And like, I'm I'm not expecting to win a Super Bowl this year. So, like, the fuck do I care if we have nine wins or ten wins or whatever? If we make the playoffs, hey, man, every year is a shot, right? We could get lucky. We could do it. That's great. I would love it. But my expectations are to see the quarterback progress, which he's doing, and to see this, to see us start to take control of this division. And that runs through the Packers, the team that we can't beat. So that's why I set my expectations – there because the way I look at it, like you looked at it from a, a, a negative point of view. I look at it from a positive point of view for me to be happy, for me to be satisfied. Fuck it, man. Beat the Packers two times. If you come out with nine wins at the end of the year, but you beat the Packers two times, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good going into the next year. I don't know if that makes sense or not. I think it does. And I, I obviously can't talk you off of this point, right? Again, I for for my oh, money, you might. I, my I, I think change. I think that your word expectation, specifically to the point of beating the Packers twice, you should use the word desire in my opinion. Because that's the vibe I'm getting from it and that's what I'm thinking. But as far as a true expectation, going into this year, I did not expect the Bears to win the Super Bowl. I did not expect the Bears to win the division nor go to the playoffs. No, my desire. I expected well, them to not. I expected them to have a better draft position than last year, in the sense that they shouldn't be drafting ninth overall again. They have improved. They should not be drafting ninth overall. I guess that was my expectation. But next year, after the Lions have blown their load, whatever they're going to end up doing at the trade deadline to hamstring themselves, I don't know what Aiden Hutchinson, poor Aiden Hutchinson, is going to come back to. Um, I made that comment in the other show. I just watched where, uh, I don't know if you can still hear me. Um, if the Lions end up losing two, one, two, let's call it even three games in a row after the Hutchinson injury, maybe that team's rock strong confidence gets fractured, you know? that That's a whole different conversation. But I think that the Lions are the team that has the expectations this year. But let's get the Bears a little bit more time in the system with their superstar quarterback and then add three picks in the top 64. Two of those picks damn well will be linemen. Offense and defense, offense and offense, defense and defense. I don't know what it'll be. They're going to go best pick available, and they're going to end up adding to the trenches. And that's a bit of the weak spot on this team, definitely the offensive line. But next year is when we can talk about expectations. I think the playoffs are an expectation for the Bears next year and every year that Caleb Williams is the quarterback of the Chicago Bears. But this year... I've got no expectations other than improving from last year. Well, my desire is to have Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes. My expectation I've got a is surprise to have for a you. guy is to have a guy that's at least able to do it once on his own, even if we have to get lucky. Because like that that's what I mean. Like uh, I'm still very suspect on this coaching staff. I think we'll we'll hit a wall with them at some point. And so I, I think what, there's what happened with the Green Bay Packers offensive situation. It got to mean? the point where Aaron Rodgers became the offensive coordinator. So I, I think that the Bears did a good job of hiring Waldron in the sense and not um, Cliff Kingsbury because the Bears are teaching Caleb how to run a professional offense. But if whatever you're going to say, right, PJ had made this comment on the Bears Country podcast that 
oh, if the Bears win a Super Bowl, Shane Waldron is gone. That's fine. Because hopefully that means that Caleb Williams is running the show and you're simply getting a play caller that can befriend Caleb Williams and essentially help echo the offense that the Bears have won the Super Bowl with at that point. Um, Eberflus, if he was to get fired, maybe he'll take a year off. As soon as he resumes being a defensive coordinator in the NFL, he's an, an undoubted top five defensive coordinator in the NFL. He is a motherfucking fantastic defensive coach. And I hate the 4-3 with a passion and look at his defense performing lights out. They've turned Hunter Hill and Myers' old role into Kyler Gordon. They've adapted and got it is beautiful. He is a great defensive head coach. Is he the best head coach ever? I don't think so. But it might be good enough. It all depends on Caleb. It is good enough. And it because it depends on Caleb. So th- that's the thing. Is like, you know, and I went back and forth with my co-host on this for three years before he finally understood, finally kind of succumbed to it. Like, dude, I get it. Like your expectations should be pretty damn high. And like I said, Super Bowl or bust. I want to win one here. To me, it doesn't matter that Lamar has two MVPs. That's cute. Like, it doesn't matter to me that Dallas has had three seasons with 12 wins every year. That's cute. We're all in the same boat unless we're getting a ring. And the guys that have rings, like I said, are dinosaurs at this point. The only guy to beat Patrick Mahomes is the previous guy that won however many Super Bowls. And it, it's it's really just it, – it's a crazy landscape we have in the NFL right now. But being in the but NFC, it's, it's kind of, it's we kind have, of we have the opportunity – to, to have the best quarterback in the NFC and have a good shot at it, right? So I want to see the growth, and the divisional games are so important because of that. I want to see you take control of this division and hold on to it because you have the opportunity here to be able to fight Patrick Mahomes year to year on the other side. Like we said, take the fifth best AFC it's quarterback. Set up. It's set up, man. It is. And, and it is. It's there's going to be so much hate for it, bro. Can you imagine the Bears versus the Chiefs in the bro. next four out of five Super Bowls? People will say, "Oh, the NFL's rigged. It's garbage." No, you you know why I'm a Bears fan? Because I'm sitting here thinking, like, could you imagine if Jordan Love takes that spot? What spot? It's like the fucking control of the NFC North. Oh, or an NFC Caleb period. Of Caleb, the way that we're talking, correct. Mm. Because we've that's what we've lived I've through. I've got another surprise for That's what you. we've lived through. That's what we've experienced. And so, like, dude, for that's what I need to happen here. Like, I need us to shut them out. I need love to prove himself nothing better than average or a bit better than average. And I need Caleb to be a superstar. And until we have a Bears quarterback, like, I don't care about 4,000 yards. I don't care about all the stupid records in the history that we have that make people say, well, you can't do it because you've never done it. None of that matters. We, You get one guy in here, and it can completely change around. Dude, like, ownership is another topic I go into all the time. Dude, do you think Jim Ursay oh. on the Colts is a good owner? Dude, he was just I as hate, crazy. He was just I as crazy the when they drafted Peyton he Manning. Conducts himself. I know. He was just as insane yes. when they drafted yeah. Peyton Manning. And yeah. for some reason, the, Peyton Manning's entire career there, all of a sudden he wasn't a crazy owner until Peyton Manning left. Guess what, guys? It's about the damn quarterback. Like that's it just boils down to that. And that's why it's, it's so worth taking a risk and a shot on that until you get it right. And I mean right, not like maybe right. But we still have to pay him top money. No, like I want Caleb to prove it to me, and these are the things he has to do to prove it to me. Hey, but before we before I go off on another tangent, that this has been such a good show, and there's been so many guys that have popped into chat. Um, definitely not, you know, ignoring anyone in chat. I've been trying to give you the hearts and the fist bumps and all that cool stuff. But let me just read off Mr. some producer names, here. I'm I'm very surprised that there's been so many new names that I'm not familiar with. And a lot of it's from Polly's channel. Polly, thank you for simulcasting this because it just is going to help with the conversation. There's someone named Sophisticated Thoughts. There's Yahtzee. Yes, Sophisticated. Yep, those are my guys. Yahtzee, you know why I like Yahtzee? 
he was a uh, he was the guy he was the um the Chase Claypool mob. He chewed oh. me out for my Chase hey. Claypool take. And then after what, a while, you, did you dislike after, J- Chase Claypool? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I love, yeah. I loved Chase Claypool. See, don't let yeah, anyone know. So, I loved so Chase Claypool. Did Swifty on our yeah. very first show ever, and I don't care how many subscribers Swifty had. We just disagreed with him. We're like, no, dude. Yeah. It's not just about measurables. It's about football. It's not that that he's as hey, big as fast as Megatron. He doesn't he play like Megatron. It did, yeah, but, took, but that, yeah. That, that goes nowhere, dude. Because I don't Chase want to go on a sucks. tangent. And so, so I, 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 I like appreciate Chase Claypool. Yahtzee. I took an L there. I appreciate Yahtzee because he stuck around through that. And at one point, he was just like, yeah, fuck Chase Claypool. Yeah, <laughs> so, that, yeah that's at the some take. point, you got to have. He's a CFL you know, superstar. Yeah. But yeah, he's a good but, dude, man. Let me keep listing off the names Scottish Bear, Plank, and um, Mr. Uh, not J2K, but uh, Cliff Victoria, a.k.a. Don Burr. That, there, there's your triangle that you were talking about earlier. Th- those are the BCP triangles. We got Bear's Truth 9 in here as well, and AC Adam. Oh, another BCP stand in. How's it going, AC Adam? Um, and then there was a few more. Connor Lee. Um, Bear Truth has been pumping out the chats. Um, I think that's everyone. But yeah, they, thank you guys so much for adding to the conversation. We absolutely, really, really appreciate it. Um, Cliff made a cool point, or at least echoing what I said. Losing the uh, Lions losing Hutchinson may destroy their season. I do think that losing him is worse than the Bears, if the Bears lost Sweat. Absolutely. Um, I think that a cool thing about the Lions is that Ali McNeil was a player who I thought was okay. I had no idea that he was a third-round pick. But as soon as Hutchinson got hurt, they're like, fuck it, we got to do something. They gave Ali McNeil his money, and they're hoping that he can fill in the slack. And I hope that it doesn't cause an issue because Ali McNeil against the Bears' interior offensive line could be a problem. Yeah, um, he's a guy I've heard nothing but good things about. So, Ali McNeil, watch him just play against the Bears. The Bears were beating that ass last year, but Ali McNeil was showing up. He's a very good player. Um, Boy, what do we talk about? The expectations. I don't know. I, I think that, I don't know. I just don't think that your definition of expectations is as rock solid as I'd want it to be. I think it's a, a combination. You, you have a combination of ex- expectations, preferences, and desires. I'm with you on them. Because well, they're all different. I, they're all different words. They're desi- all different things. My desire, if anything, would be like that lion season before they went to the playoffs. Just miss out on the playoffs and knock the Packers out of the fucking playoffs. No, dude, my desire I'd be okay is with that Tom Brady this year. Fucking six Super Bowls here. That's what I dream Th- that, about. That's desire. That's not yeah, expectation. Yeah, that's, that's desire. Correct. Yeah. Expectation is let's at least control our division. That's not that high, man. Like you're making it out to be this crazy thing that it's Hold really on. not. In, in the grand scheme, it's not because a four and two Bears team would essentially be the first place in every other division besides. Um, the AFC Chiefs, whatever that is, West. So record-wise, they could be. But this is a goddamn good division, Paul. It's very good. That's probably our worst luck this year is how good the other team And it's is. ironic. The Michigan man, J.J. McCarthy, gets injured, and they have a good quarterback too? What the fuck? So- I mean, long-term, that might actually benefit us. And I'm getting confused on what to do, but um, – but Please. could you actually imagine this team with an actual quarterback for the next seven years? It, it's kind of this is a little. Scary. Who are you talking about? The Vikings. The Vikings, yeah. So like, so a lot of the Vikings success, man, a lot of the Viking successes are coaching, and they've got a goddamn good head coach who's also a play caller. I like, they're I like. not gonna lose O'Connell. He's a very good play caller, head coach, whatever you want to say. Brian Flores. I don't want to call him the best defensive coordinator in the NFL. And if the Vikings win the Super Bowl, Brian Flores will not be a head coach next year because the NFL is out to get his sorry ass, which really sucks. I'll be right back. He will be along forever. Okay. Um, Mr. Brian Flores is not going to be around forever. Um, But he's a damn good head coach. While Paulie's away, if you guys want to have any specific points made up in chat, I'd be happy to talk on them. Again, thank you guys. Ant Mass, bear down, man. It's really, really nice to to talk to you guys and chat over here on the Dying Spine channel. I think a lot of these are pouring in from Dying Spine. Um, but if you guys are over on Polly's channel as well, obviously please follow Polly. Polly's a great guy, obviously. Um what are some other points? Cliff, I'm or this is Scottish Bear's point if you're here still here, Scottish. I, I favorited this because I want to ask Polly when it gets to time. Um 
regarding Caleb Williams if if Caleb Williams rather is Patrick Mahomes mark two in the long run I don't want to so we're talking about expectations right I don't know if that's my expectation but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised right I have been I have been excited about the bear season but I'm more so after seeing Caleb's play so far yeah Cliff that's the thing right I expected Caleb Williams to be good and here's the cool thing about Caleb Williams, right? He is kind of reverting back to the college play in the sense that they're running the hurry-up offense. They've got the dink and dunk. They are trying the shot plays, but the shot play to DJ Moore, of course, was an interception. And outside of those shot plays, Caleb Williams is not making a lot of the outside-of-the-pocket wow plays that we maybe some of us expected that, ironically. The one outside of the pocket play that he made that was fucking fantastic was to Cole Komet, right? He rolled out, and that was also a great job on Cole Komet. He was truly blocking on the play, I feel, and once he understood the assignment, he got out. It wasn't a perfect pass. It was a little bit behind him. I don't think it would have mattered because the fact that he caught it was all that was needed. Um, yeah, Cliff, the the hurry up definitely does mess with the opponents, and um, I don't know if I heard this on your channel, Polly, but someone was critical of the Bears starting each and every game in the shotgun. Um, ironically, we just watched the All-22 over on um, Bears Country Podcast. The Bears did not start in shotgun. Um, but they can't start the offense out and hurry up either because I think what they need to do is get a grasp of what they're playing. So once they know what the opposing team is doing, then they can go into hurry up and say, okay, now this is what we need to do to beat this. Did you just go, I don't know if uh, I heard this bullshit that's not true on your channel, but I heard this bullshit and it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you didn't hear it on our channel. We we don't care what formation they come out of. Like, that's listen. Uh, I understand that th this is their job to sit there and study tape, go over a game plan, and try and formulate the best game plan that they think is going to work. Um, I don't care what formation they come out of. Game of the game. Uh, I'm just going to judge it by the overall success. And so, yeah, at the end of the day, um, I was very critical of the coaches and Shane Waldron very early on because very early on it did look sloppy and bad. And even just like in that game against the Jaguars, when I posted that meme that you told me to delete, and I was like, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> um, I, I said, I, I was trying to help you out. I said, you have the chance to still delete this. No, Joking, I'm not hiding. Jokingly, jokingly. Yeah, I'm not hiding from my thoughts and my, <laughs> my emotions here, but, like, because in the moment, those first two drives look bad, really bad. And so, like, um, the difference is being able to change, adapt, and come back from that uh, instead of having that bad linger, which is what I'm kind of used to, you know what I mean? So I will give credit to where credit's due, at least they're – making the changes and the moves as needed. Like, dude, like I, I was, I would have cut Nate, um, Velas Jones last year. I was like, why are you giving Velas Jones more opportunities? Yeah, let me, let but me at throw least, my but at least favorite they statistic they from PFF for you. At, at least they stopped. I was like, why are you letting Nate Davis out there near the football? Unless he's your only healthy offensive lineman. Don't let them near the football. And they stopped. So, like, it's okay to make mistakes. At least show you're competent enough to evaluate properly and make the changes that you need to accordingly. I mean, we talked about different teams like the 49ers moving on from a third overall pick that they drafted. That you said, oh, that guy still would be starting here. 100%. He would still be a member of the Chicago Bears. Correct. 100%. And, and so, so that's what I'm talking about. I like seeing that change that like, okay, at least you can identify what's not working and what's wrong and move on from it. And it's fine. Like, I don't know. Uh, so to me, I, uh, that's a positive step for the coaching staff. And as critical as I've been of them, I'll give them credit in that aspect that they've been able to do that well lately. And it's done nothing but help them. Do you take any stock into the Bears and specifically their offense not scripting the first 15 plays like the traditional NFL likes to do? Huge. Yes, extremely. When you I heard like that, it? I was like, of course. I was like, what, what is this? Like, I, I mean, I don't want to use the R word on your show, but I was like, is he? 
Dumb, dumb. need help mentally? Like the, Is he the challenged? dude, the Kansas City Chiefs script twenty five plays. A lot of good teams script twenty plays. Everybody else scripts at least fifteen. What do you mean? What you're smarter than everybody else you're just gonna be my take innovate? like come on my, now my take on that is they want to throw everything at caleb williams and have caleb williams learn what he likes the most and the bears need to learn what caleb williams is best at in their offense before they start shoeholing him into i don't know if that's the correct term you know deciding what he's going to do before they know what's best for him if that makes sense you know you should be capable of being able to do that during the offseason i feel but again, maybe it's with the intentions of Caleb Williams and his growth. If that's what it is, and once the Bears continue to win, let's say the Bears serve the Packers a big penis. They absolutely destroy them, right? Maybe then the next set of divisional games, they will be scripting and saying, hey, yeah. we just we didn't just win. We kicked some ass. Stop us. And I think that that's fine. what they're waiting for. And then and it's fine. Th surprise, they're doing it. It's against bad teams. Right. So maybe we have to wait and see for a, a, a good team. It's still an NFL defense. But No, the, uh, right, exactly. And, and as long as you have the success as well, like it, it's fine. Um, it's fine to go through ups and downs. It's fine to be, you know, take a little bit of time to figure things out. Um, but with with the best quarterbacks in the league, you don't need that much time. And I and that's what I think is the best thing to take Correct. out of all this is that the the trajectory that Caleb Williams is on is a lot better than I thought it was going to be, See? which which kind of helps me and my confidence say that man this kid is going to be for real. Six games, Polly, and I'm already declaring Caleb Williams a top ten NFL quarterback. Um, I don't think it's appropriate to do it now, but me and PJ and the Bears Country podcast have aligned next week's show on Thursday to rank the quarterbacks in the NFL. I don't know how it's going to play out exactly, but I'm not going to let the show end without Caleb Williams being the 10th best at the very least because it doesn't take long for you to see it. And after the stumbling blocks of the first two weeks, oh my God, he has been fantastic. If you look, we've been looking at the All-22 the past two weeks. He's doing things with his eyes that I've never seen a Bears quarterback ever do, not even the great Jay Cutler. Um, I say that jokingly after his news today. But... He's doing things with his eyes to move. What a safety. stud, huh? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. I still think he's a good quarterback for the Bears. I'm not going to leave it at that. He didn't kill anyone. That's we've he had. Didn't... Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, man, Caleb Williams is doing things that I would not have expected. I like to say that word on the show. Expected Caleb Williams to be doing by the sixth game in the NFL. And again, imagine his sixth game in the sixth year of the NFL. This kid is primed and ready to be the next superstar. Yeah, I'm, um, dude. I, I think I want to go back to Indianapolis when they drafted Peyton Manning. You know what their first year was? It was a record bad wise? record, but I definitely can tell you he led the league in interceptions. Twenty-eight interceptions, sure, but the team itself. What the record? Did they was. already have Marvin Harrison at that time? No, I think they drafted him the next year. Sure. Okay. But what, what what's your point here though? He he went three and thirteen. Yeah. And then what happened? He's a damn good quarterback, so he figured it out. It elevates. He never missed the playoffs again. Never missed the you, playoffs again. You might be wrong because of an injury, but yeah, I, I get the point. Yeah, his zero and six. Uh, yeah, right. When he his neck got hurt or whatever, but like not to catch when it's technicality. I understand your point full. So. The impact of a good quarterback is gigantic, even if it takes a little it's bit of time. It's the most important thing, especially in today's pass-happy NFL offense-first NFL. Right. And it's not the flashes that'll do it for you. It's the flashes that'll help you get lucky. You know what I mean? And you could gamble on those things, but that's not what I want. I want, like I said, dominance by design. And to do that, you need a damn good quarterback. And that's what we're seeing out of Caleb. And for me, part of that is winning this damn division. Like I was promised by Ryan Poles when he got the job, we're going to take the NFC North and not give it back. 
So yeah, that's a good comment, Scottish Bear. Oh um, yeah, Scottish Bear, that's fucking awesome, man. For the audio listeners, I mean, I, I, that's only vis- visual because I don't know if you upload this to any sort of a uh, audio only streams, Polly. But for the chat, no, Jay Cutler was shooting the opening sequence for the Longest Yard Part Two. Unfortunately, that's probably what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, regardless of Jay Cutler's situation, I mean, uh, do my buddy called me. He's like, he had a gun on him. I was like, he's a hunter. I was like, but it was a loaded Glock, so it was for protection. <laughs> <laughs> but, but whatever, you know, he's like, he's I know a gun guy. Yes, whatever. <laughs> let, let me. Uh, I want to drive home your point about the quarterback because we're on the same page there. But uh, when you look at the most recent Super Bowl winners, I'm going to try and point out a Super Bowl winner that was not named Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, or Patrick Mahomes, and kind of like explain it. So the Los Angeles Rams. They went all in. They acquired Jalen Ramsey. They had the best defensive player in football, a first ballot Hall of Famer, Aaron Donald. That's the story there. And he they also acquired Matt Stafford. For Von Miller. For like, right, right. And I don't even know if he played. Season. They, they also had a wide won? receiver, Odell. They, they you know did why everything. Because because Burrow beat Patrick Mahomes that year. Yeah, if, if Mahomes is in that situation, and then the Bengals awesome were way, a much more beatable them. team. They and were, and the Rams won the Super Bowl in their home stadium, so it it was so right. so slanted. I mean, again, that that's what I'm trying to say. There's always a story. The Philadelphia Eagles beat the Patriots for two reasons: the Philly special, and because Brandon Graham went to the University of Michigan. He got the final sack to stop Brady on the comeback drive. I'll never super forget lucky. that. Super. Lucky. That's what. Yeah, they they, the, they their, won that their Super luck Bowl. Spiked. Yeah, um, the Denver Broncos again. That's a, a Peyton Manning team. Um, but before well, that, deserved. Patriots and then the Seattle Seahawks, the Legion of Boom. Ever heard of them? That's an incredible defense. Maybe this is the anomaly, Ravens versus 49ers. Again, Ravens, fantastic defense, and Joe Flacco, legendary playoff run. Okay, but then look at that situation, Ty. Everybody and their mother. Now, I I, I don't know. I, I, at the time, I was actually working with David, mm-hmm. um, and we were talking about it. We're like, you have to pay him, but he's not worth it. Everybody knows Flacco's not worth $100 million, but he just gambled on himself and won you a damn Super Bowl. The situation, you can't be the only team that moves on from a quarterback after winning a Super Bowl twice. We talked about Trent Dilfer. The right thing to do for them would have been to not sign Joe Flacco for $100 million. Because he never breath, won one again. In the same breath, not paying him would have been asinine, in my opinion. So it'd be what? an asinine move not to pay Joe Flacco, but it was the wrong move to play. It was to dictated pay. by the situation. Exactly. And, and so that's the trouble that all these teams find themselves in. That's why Daniel Jones has a big contract right now, because of the situation the Giants are in. Well, who else is better? And now we have to pay him top money. And this, I, I don't want to get caught up in that. If we're going to pay a guy, he better be damn worth it. If he's damn worth it, he's only got God. three years to prove so. And, and that that expectation, that bar is very high. It is. Yeah. It just is. Look at this. This goes back to the 2000. I like to call it the modern yep. era it's of the crazy. NFL. It's- the Titans beat the Rams. The Rams probably would fit this conversation better because they were the greatest show on turf. I'm sorry, the, the Rams did win. So, again, greatest show on turf, the offense. But then, Third outside, outside outside, of Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Patrick Mahomes, the 2000 Ravens or 2001 Ravens had the, one of the best defenses of all time beat the Giants. Then here we go. R- Patriots, Tom Brady. Then again, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Oakland Raiders in 03. The 2002 season, I believe. Yep. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, insane defense, and then here the we go. Bears made You're, the Super Bowl in in in, in February for, exactly in February first, two thousand four. The winning team, Patriots. Then Patriots, the Seahawks. I'm sorry, the C, the Steelers beat the Seahawks. That that was a uh, probably a good defense from the um, Steelers, but that offense also pulled its weight so a, a weird one in my opinion for this conversation but then you're right but, back to it but santonio holmes was their mvp super bowl mvp and they didn't sign him they let him go in the offseason and moved no, I'm, on I'm, to ta- the- I'm talking about 2005 Steelers. Or, um, 
the yeah the O five yep. season played in two thousand yep. or maybe it's the O six season. San Antonio Holmes was there, a Super Bowl MVP that year. Did he throw the? No, it was Antoine Randall L who threw a touchdown pass to Heinz Ward. Oh, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Yeah, it was that yeah. second one against the Cardinals. Santonio San Holmes had that incredible, beautiful catch against the Cardinals, and that's why he that's won. Right, that's right. You're right. Again, the only point I'm trying to make here is that outside of the trio of fantastic quarterbacks, you have to be a very special team in another way. You got to get and lucky. I, I, lo- I love the Bears' defense. Lucky. The Bears' defense would need so many more investments made into Nick it Foles, to be man. able to win a Super Bowl. Nick Foles is the other guy. <laughs> Think about it. Nick Foles, like you got to get so. It was damn a talented lucky, Eagle team. Carl. Yeah, and they had they had they had the NFL MVP playing quarterback before he tore his ACL against the Rams. So it's a weird situation again. But again, they beat Tom Brady. Tom Brady was at the Super Bowl. So. I think we're in, we're in lockstep. You need the best quarterback in the NFL, arguably, uh, you know, top two, three quarterback in the NFL to make the Super Bowl and then win it. So right now, it's really Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. Those are the only guys that are truly competing for this thing, right? CJ any... Stroud, much to my uh, chagrin, might enter that conversation. We have why? to see. He hasn't because... done it yet. Right, exactly. But like we talked about, so CJ Stroud has elevated the play around him on offense. He has elevated an average, a below average offensive line for my money sure. into being at least average. He has taken an unknown Nico Collins and made him one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. He is elevating Tank Dell, in my opinion, Stephon Diggs better. So and then now, the- because they have to cover the pass, okay, let's go get Joe Mixon. So, so CJ Stroud is the fifth, whole cog. Fifth AFC team? This is what I'm talking about, man. So, like, the NFC. They're going to be the NFC, hosting a home playoff game because they're the going to win the like, division. Who's the best quarterback in the NFC? Dak Prescott? Kirk Cousins? Brock oh Purdy? Jordan I know. Love? It, it, like, it's like lined this thing's up. for the taking. Absolutely. My because expectation. if the Bears were a team in the AFC and they got Caleb Williams, talk about a bloodbath more than it already is. That would be a disgusting situation. My preference is that we have a guy better than we've had before which is low bar. My expectation is that we take control of the entire NFC, not just the NFC North, but that we have the best quarterback in the NFC by a mile because that's what's available and that's the opportunity at hand. My desire is that he becomes Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady. So if you wanted a clear definition on all three of those, there they are. Right. I think, I guess, as far as expectations, I get exactly where you're coming from now. But as far as your expectation, I guess, let's just clear the air. They're just now. high, man. They're just high. Do Do you expect the Bears to win the NFC North or at the very least sneak into the playoffs as a wild card team? Do you expect that? From what I've seen so far this year, my answer changed from no to yes. That feels very impactful. Yeah, it is. That feels that's like the I'm Bears excited. have done a number on you in a good way. No, it's Caleb that's done a number on me. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, I'm impressed a lot. And so that's why, as as scarred as I am as a Bears fan, uh, no, this, this looks real to me. It feels real. It is real. I know what I'm seeing. Like this kid barring injury, like that's, that's the only thing it's that health. Like I said, that triangle of yeah, luck you know and talent. We're talented enough, man. We are, we got a good enough defense, got a good enough special teams and we have a good enough offense. Do we need to get lucky? Sure. We don't need a spike in luck. Like the Eagles did with Nick Foles. Let, but but that health, man, like as long as these guys stay healthy, yeah, I truly think we can make a, make a good run here. One, one thing I said earlier on was that I felt like luck was the most important of that triangle that you're referencing. I think that the luck of ensuring that your stars don't get healthy, that is what I mean is the moment. You can't really control that, right? Like you can go the Patrick Mahomes route and bend over the table and have your knee bent 90 degrees to the side 
to prevent a potential knee injury, right? And I hate that I'm talking about this because if this happens, I'm probably going to have to delete my channel. But that's what I'm saying. You need the luck to stay healthy. You need the luck of the calls to where when Caleb Williams is out of bounds and gets hit, that you get the call. Because that could eventually end up being luck because it's a 50-50 thing, right? If they call it or, or not, it's subjective. That's what I'm trying to say. But you can only control what you can control. Build the strongest roster that you can. Fortify the trenches in this up next upcoming draft. Make sure that Caleb Williams is building the rapport with the wide receivers. One of the last things I want to say before we end this too, the only thing, that, and I've said this already, the missing component that I need to see from Caleb Williams for me to start considering him an MVP of the NFL I need him to take a Tyler Scott or a wide receiver and truly elevate them. Hell, I need Caleb Williams to take DJ Moore and have there be this weird conversation of who's better between DJ Moore and Amon Ross St. Brown. That shouldn't be a conversation. I want DJ Moore to be a top five wide receiver in the NFL, undisputed. I want Packers fans to say, oh my God, DJ Moore is a top five wide receiver in the NFL. Do I think Caleb Williams can do it? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Has he done it? in week six of the NFL season, not just yet. Well, I think we, real quick, you have to separate health and luck. So the luck is, is the calls going your way. I mean, dude, as, as we both know, there is holding on every single play. Like whether they call it or not, I don't know what dictates that, but like there's a certain element of luck, like the fumbles bouncing your way. Do that Anthony Richardson play yeah. where it was a fumble and they called it dead? Like, what the? F huh? Or the, uh, tra the Travis Etienne catch where Tremaine Erlacher, I said that correctly, Tremaine Erlacher forced the fumble. That's a bit of luck there. So, so that's different from health. Of course, health always relies on luck. You need to be lucky to stay healthy but if you just separate health and do its own thing um then that could do it too like because like i said with the eagles they didn't stay healthy carson wentz got hurt their backup and nick Foles came in and got really damn lucky and was a super bowl mvp Right, like you could still do it despite the health. It's just a very, very, very rough road, and there aren't many examples of it actually succeeding. But it's possible. Do, do you know what you should do, Polly? Because I think if you're ever going to talk about this again, and I feel like you have talked about this on your own show or any of your show, you either need yourself or you need someone like a professional. Let's shout out J2K here. I think that you should make this triangle that you're talking about, and I'm sure it's not a unique point to yourself. Um, you're explaining it perfectly, but have that triangle look like the recycle sign because it can't be separate. It's not three separate components. I think it's a triangle that's connected, if that makes sense, you know, because if you like are a talented player in Madden, if, if you only have so many you, points to spend, man, <laughs> fair enough. If you, if you're a talented offensive line, you're going to prevent injuries to the quarterback. If you're a lucky team, you're going to get the balls that bounce your way, and the talent might look better because you're returning forced fumbles for touchdowns instead of just getting them at your own 30-40. Does that make sense? Yeah, and if you're a talented quarterback, you need the least of everything. Like, uh, Yeah, you don't need so the bad. luck because you're putting the ball on the back shoulder of Keenan yeah, Allen 100%. and telling the two players on the Jaguars who are in perfect position, you're telling them, fuck you. So, so the situation we have catch. now with DJ Moore, with Keenan Allen, with Romo Dunze, it's there to help Caleb grow. Once Caleb does grow, then we'll see if he can make wide receivers out of no names. Yeah, it's it's so it's, so it's just too premature for that. Like this is set up for him to gain the confidence, gain the ability, gain the experience, and once he does, and the money will shift towards him when it does the expectations become different. Now you can't afford all that. Like unless you're smart, like Tom Brady, take a fucking lesser deal so that you can afford more balance on the team. And that's just, there's only one example of that. And it's Tom Brady. I don't understand why t teams don't do it more often. Like we said, Patrick Mahomes deal is very favorable, but I, I just do the blueprints there. It's there. Yep. Yeah, like, yeah. No, that's that's the subsequent point of this podcast. This episode has been 
the the framework to success for the quarterback position. And again, Patrick Mahomes' contract, $450 million over 10 years. Those are disgusting numbers. But what does it boil down to? 45 a year. We're seeing quarterbacks getting paid $60 million a year. So a lot of people would say, oh my God, Patrick Mahomes is not being paid enough. I'm gonna do I'm gonna crunch the numbers if if it's public. I hope it is. Oh, dude, I'll send you what I, I, I have swear it. I swear to God, Patrick Mahomes is three endorsement deals from State Farm. Ironic because I'm gonna have to do some insurance shit for myself this weekend. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Head and shoulders, and he's got one more some sort of food deal. I think it's Subway. Dang. Those three endorsement deals combined. That salary annually, I promise you, would put him in top 10 most paid quarterbacks in the NFL. I promise you. And I just want to end this just by commenting on what just Scottish Berger said. You also got to get lucky with your coordinators. So here's the difference. One year of success or sustained success? If you want sustained success... You need everything to go right. Your head coach needs to be one of those all coordinators. Of it. All of it. Bill 100%. Belichick called the defense. 100%. Andy Reid calls the offense. So, In order to get one Super Bowl, you could still be Aaron Rodgers with Mike McCarthy and Joe Philbin and still being the most sacked quarterback just because you're the damn best quarterback. And you can still just pull off one. Like, you can still get one. But that's why we look back at that and say, well, he should have gotten more. Yeah, he should have if the situation was better, but it wasn't. But he still got one because he was good enough. So, you know, it's it's an interesting conversation. But, yeah, it all starts and ends with the quarterback. So, Yeah, Cliff. Um, Caleb Williams obviously came into the NFL as a, I don't know if a multimillionaire, but absolutely a millionaire before he even signed the NFL contract. And the way that he's setting his money up, he's going to be financially successful. His family is. Caleb Williams is going to have a child, and that child is going to have a child, and that that second spring child, two tiers down, they're not going to have to work. Caleb Williams, the Williams generational line is set up. They don't have to worry about money. They're doing it correctly. Um, Ant Mess, I really appreciate that comment, man. He says you guys should keep doing a Friday night show. Polly, if you're down to you know do this cross thing, I'm I think I'm okay with that. Um, Unfortunately, I would love Nick to join with us, but Nick. It's so hard. It's like pulling teeth. Yeah, the stars I, have I, to align for Nick. I'd love cool. to commit to something, but um, and I, I didn't mean I to put you on the right. spot. No, no, hey, go ahead, put me on the spot. I don't give a fuck. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, Thai, I I love the work you do on BCP as a producer. That's what got me uh, chiming back into BCP. Um, hey. Because yeah, like uh, I thought you did a much better job than a previous producer but um dude i uh i do like the conversation with you i do like the back and forth i do like your character and your ability to to go back and forth and i like you call me out like you said um on the bcp podcast you're like oh paul lost his marbles and post it, and I was like, you know, yeah, it was just one picture. But you're like, yeah, who else is gonna give you? I shit? gotta yeah, give you a hard shit. time. I'll, I'll take Paulie, it. if I don't give you a, a hard time, who's gonna I give you a hard time, man? Welcome it, dude. I welcome <laughs> it. I appreciate it, and that's one of the things I like about you. So, yeah, for sure, I'm always looking. Uh, I'm always down to make more content. And Cliff Victoria, god damn it, you know, there's so much you learn about podcasting when you do it, and, and like, I, I he, want, he I is, want he's a punk kid. I want it. I want um, it. That's what I wanted. But he is a good guy for sure. I agree. But uh, that. Cliff's so right. And like one of the things that's the science behind these Bears podcasts is kind of finding time slots where things are dead and this and that, which is why sometimes I premiere my videos tonight. Because I'm like, hey, no live shows. Okay, well, here's an hour long Bears ski film, anything. You know what mm. I mean? So Cliff is totally right. There is some type of science to that. But, uh, but, Listen, that's not my goal. I don't like. I just want to talk football, man. Anytime we can, whether it's Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday after the game, this and that. If I have the time free, and I'm I'm down, that's all it takes for me. So, you know what, Paul? Let me take the the. I'll, I'll be the ring bearer. I'll take the ring to Mordor. What I'll say is, is that I will strive to try and do a show for the Vines My Channel on every either Friday or Saturday. I've always tinkered with the idea of um, 
having the last word before the game, if that makes sense, you know? So maybe throughout the yeah. week as I compile stuff for the Thursday show on BCP, I'll do a little bit of a brain dump on Friday or Saturday night, depending on what's going on in the the, the, the vitality household. And yeah. if you want to be on, you're more than welcome. And I know that Nick would agree with you. If Nick's on and you want to jump on, hell, if Dave Ski wants to jump on, fine by me. Well, this is what I'm saying. We're an hour 50 minutes in. I told you, me and Dave Ski it feels like went five back minutes, and Paul. forth for three years on just this. <laughs> on just expectations. He Okay, how about this? I know we want to end the show, but whatever. I'm going to keep it going. I don't care. I give a fuck. He would ask me, what would you rather have? 10 years where you make the playoffs every year, but you don't win a Super Bowl. Or 10 years where one year you get a Super Bowl, but then the other nine you don't make the playoffs. That's a, such an easy answer. Well, to him it wasn't. Like, what's your answer? Just like the 06 season, right? The Bears could have won the Super Bowl in 06 and not went back to the playoffs until the 2018 season that we saw. That would have been fine by Yeah, me. I go, motherfucker, Give we haven't won ring. one in 40 years. <laughs> You're telling me I can have one every 10? Yeah. That means do I can not, have four? Yeah, do I'll not get four. involved with me in any fantasy football. I think it's Nodge. I think I learned that Nodge is the person in the ESPN league I'm in with Swifty and Adam that um, he keeps saying stuff about the Huskies. Fuck your Huskies. I got the ring. Go blue, baby. That's what I'm saying. All I want matters. the Super Bowl ring. Yeah, Carl, exactly. I told you I reference uh, South Park all the time. The, the episode was, how do I reach these kids? When he's playing basketball with the one girl and he's like smacking her, he's like, but what's the score? He's like pretending to be Bill Belichick, <laughs> cheating. He's like, but what's the score? But what's the score? Dude, that's all that matters. You either get it or you don't. That's why I said everything else is cute. But like until you beat Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid right now, because they're the they're better than the Patriots. They're going to be. It's just, dude, they got the coaching. They got – it's it's unbelievable what the league has to deal with, and that's the hurdle. So, yeah, it's going to take a lot, and it's going to take a damn good quarterback also. Yeah. Let's send it off on that. I agree. It, the, the ring is the most important thing. The cool thing is, is that the Bears are not taking a Los Angeles Rams approach and throwing everything away for one year. They are setting it up for sustained success. Not yet. But trust me, tr they're in they're on the trajectory. But yeah, yeah exactly. They're if you're saying to. not yet, they they're going might to do have this. To. They're going to have to. Have I don't some. know if they're going to have to, but I do think that they will. And we'll talk about that maybe on a future show because there's going to come up still point. Tried and they still failed. No, okay. <laughs> after, after, <laughs> after a strong draft, then they're going to see what they need, and they might end up doing the Lions approach. It's speculation, right? The Lions could absolutely be throwing away their future for now on a Garrett Wilson, Micah Parsons, whatever. As they should. Get Garrett Wilson, I'm sorry, Miles Garrett. Um, but then last thing too, just while we're live, Cliff, I agree. I I got into more of a like a fantasy football league where it was people who cared more, and that really helped it for me. But I'm in three different leagues and there's like no control over like the way that it's configured. I'm in a podcaster league that Aldo set up while he was high and the defenses each week are scoring 60 points. It's disgusting, man. If we could essentially, I don't want to call it a Bears country podcast, but just have a community, one fantasy league for me, either 10 or 12 teams, have it be people like myself, Paulski, Foster, Cliff Victoria, people who give a shit, that would be so cool. I would really appreciate that. I'm not about to do fantasy football. I think we've had this conversation, so I tried to rope you in, and I know nope, that you said that you did happening. it for a while, and you stopped, I and I respect that. I a league. That. Not doing that anymore. I, I can only respect it. I can only respect it. Cliff, Guys, it's going to have so to be much, you, everybody. me, and Foster as the backbone, and we'll have to figure out the rest. Maybe we'll throw in Aldo, but Aldo's not going to be allowed to configure the goddamn league. Screw that. No, thank you. Uh, I, I know Tooch is big into it. I haven't talked to Tooch personally, but however we throw that together. Yeah, Paul, man. I Any, love anything you want to end off the stream with? No, yeah, I, I just want to say I love the conversation with you. I love the back and forth, and I could keep going longer and longer and longer. But I do have work tomorrow, and so yeah. we do have to end this thing at some point. But yeah, man, thank you so much for just randomly 
doing two hours with me. It's awesome. Appreciate you. Yeah, I, I really wanted to be on the Monday show again. I owe you, and I really appreciate the, the simulcast here. I think that this was awesome. Hell yeah, so, man. Let, let, let me tell the chat. Yeah, let's revisit after this season. Yeah, Cliff, we'll, we'll chat. I'm sure in the chat on Thursday, we'll, we'll get something a little bit more ironed out. Um, but what I'll say to the chat, I'll try and stick to a Friday or Saturday kind of a last call before the game. And then again, Pauly, Daveski, obviously Nick, anyone who wants to come in, you guys are anyone more than welcome. So that's what we'll call it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been a blast. Um, again, hopefully we'll be seeing you for the Thursday show. I'm sure a lot of you guys are already familiar with Bearski Film, but if you are not, please, his link is in the description. Give Paulski a follow. He's got awesome content of all varieties. I believe, Paul Paulski, you said that your show's either going to be on a, a Monday or on a Wednesday. Yeah, it's not scheduled. It, okay. it, Monday and Wednesday is when we have free time, but, man, we just do what we do when yeah. we can do it. So appreciate anybody who chimes in. Yeah, subscribe, and once you guys see it, it's always a good listen. I, I look forward to at least the weekly Paulski content as far as him with Dave. It's a good conversation to listen to. They keep it real, they're honest, and that's what I really appreciate on this space. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, everyone, bear down.